Morning and welcome to Keystone Church Online. My name is Lauren Foster. This is my beautiful wife, Lauren, and we pastor here at Keystone Church. And we just wanted to take a minute to let you know what you can expect here with Church Online, if, especially if this is your first time joining us. The heart of our church is to make every person feel welcome. And so part of what you'll see this morning is a glimpse into our home because we want you to feel like you've been welcomed home into our church family. And if you're encouraged or you're a part of our church family already and you'd like to give towards supporting the vision as we advance the gospel in our community and beyond, on our website, keystonechurchpa.com, there's some different options in which you can give and support the ministry. We're so glad that you're here today and hope this message encourages you with the hope of Jesus. All right. All right. We're going to jump, jump right back into this series, and uh, just, just to give you a, a little bit of a recap, uh, the framework of this series, kind of our hinge verse, verse that we have based this off of, is found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. It says, it says this, and they've conquered him, him uh, the enemy, saved by, by the blood of the Lamb, and by, by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. death. This was a scripture written by John, the book of Revelation, and it was communicating the believers that the victory that was going to be found in their lives was becoming through two different avenues working together by the sacrifice that only Jesus can provide. But then through that work, Jesus does something in and through each and every one of us. That becomes a personal testimony of your life. And, and, and that's, that's, that's that testimony that God's given you has power, it can be encouraging. I mean, I've absolutely loved hearing from different individuals, families over the last few weeks. I, it's one of my favorite things I think I've ever done as a church, church. Just, just to be able to hear all the things that God does and, and, and the things that happen behind the scenes, like Austin mentioned, when you really contemplate how God's been faithful in your life over the years, man, it is absolutely powerful. And this is series was really birthed out of a holy desire to get us as a church and as a group of Christ followers to a place where you are not intimidated or ashamed to share your testimony. I mentioned last week there's a study that's been done recently that showed that the majority of younger Christians, over half now, believe that it's literally wrong to share your faith. And, and I, I think, think a lot of that is tied to the fact that they've seen their faith, faith they've, they've seen, seen the faith that Jesus shared in a really, really unhealthy way. way. So, so all of us have probably experienced from a distance, we, we've, we've, we've had, had a perspective of someone that we're like, man, I would never say it like that or share my faith like that. And, and that's okay, okay if that's, that's not the way you would do it, but I'm telling you, we're commanded by Christ to go, go into, into all the world, to share the gospel. Uh, the, the scripture also says that we're to lift up our eyes because the fields are ripe and ready for harvest. Meaning that there are people in your sphere in the world right now that are ready to hear the truth about Christ, even if you think they're not. And the enemy would love nothing more than for you not to be totally convinced. Nobody wants to hear about Jesus. Nobody wants to talk about Jesus. No one's interested in spiritual things. And I'm just telling you, people are already, if you would be willing to share your story. And so this life-changing, these spiritual moments that we're talking through, that you've heard people share, these become part of our personal testimony. And there's a card on your seat around you. It says how to testify on the back. There's, There's areas, areas we could actually write down some names that you could be praying for individuals. Here's the challenge. 
uh, uh, last month we took a challenge and we were walking the Bible for 21 days and we were saying, what could God do in your life if you stayed in his word for three weeks straight? What kind of a new rhythm spiritually would you start to form? Well, at the start of this series, I asked, could we start to pray for individuals in our life that right now, you have a voice, you have an influence, where, where, where they, you see them on a consistent basis, you know that they're not where they would want or desire to be in their walk with Christ. Well, you believe, maybe God's giving you an opportunity to just share your testimony, maybe just give them an invite to the church, and the whole goal would be on the first weekend of October, prayerfully consider who that individual would be. Just one. I mean, there's, there's space for three, but even if it's just one person that can be found and, and, and have the opportunity to hear the gospel, to be transformed by Jesus, how powerful could that be if they were sitting next to you in church when they heard of the hope of Christ presented? And so for some of us, we're terrified of that idea. We've never shared our faith. We've never, maybe we've never even considered that our story has impact or influence. And I'm telling you, it has far greater reach than you ever imagined. Our personal testimony, when we said this week one, is simply the story of how Jesus has transformed our life. So your personal testimony is unique. It's individual. It can have a significant impact on the lives of others. Your testimony can bring hope to the people that need Christ. And in week one, we looked at John chapter four, the woman in the well, we saw this interaction that this woman had with Jesus. And when she has a moment with Christ, her life is forever changed. She goes and shares her testimony. And I just want to show you again what we looked at that first week, John 4, 39. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him, believed in who? Believed in Jesus. Because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So this woman has, this woman has a moment, an interaction with Jesus. Her life is totally transformed and changed. She goes back to the very people in her community that, that she wanted to avoid. With whom she had a terrible reputation based on the way she had lived, she had lived her life and, and the circumstances she had gotten herself into. And yet because of her testimony of how Jesus transformed her life, it directly led to lives being changed for Christ. Whether we believe it or not, we talked about this, we made decisions every single day based on testimony. So the point is, the testimonies move people towards making a decision and or taking action. And when John was speaking in that scripture in Revelation, about the blood of the Lamb, word of our testimony, really what he is saying is our testimony is shared in both word and deed. It's not just a story. Your testimony that God is forming and shaping and writing in your life is also played out and displayed by the way that we live Every, every single, single day, day by what we do. do. So here's, here's what I want. want. Uh, I, I want to look at a passage of scripture, scripture in 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 1. This, this really shows a spiritual heritage that is formed and it can be formed and, and, and help to build, build a testimony in our lives. lives. Let's, Let's take a look at this in 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. This is Paul who's writing this letter. Paul, apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God according to the promise of the life that's in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my beloved child. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, I thank God, whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I am filled with joy. And here's the passage that I really want us to lean into this morning. I am reminded of your sincere faith. We'll talk about the significance of that statement. A faith, a faith that dwelt well, first in your grandmother Lois, and then your mother Eunice, and then now, I'm sure, dwells in you as well. If you would pray for me one more time for this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for how it shapes us. Help us to see, God, through your scripture, how we can have a spiritual heritage, how our home can become a testimony of all that you would desire to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, okay, how many of you, this is crowd participation time in church. How many of you have had a grandparent, parent, and or uncle, significant friend, someone close to your life over the years that has helped to mark and leave a legacy in your life in some form or fashion? They have helped shape you. Okay, all of us. 
without question. Um, I will tell you, in my life, I often reference them, but my grandma and grandma Zorn, they made an incredible impact in my life at a young age. I observed a lot of the way that they lived. And by the way, they didn't follow Christ until the very, very end. Both my grandfather and my grandmother, they literally said yes to Jesus on their deathbed. I mean, it's like, you talk about waiting until the very last minute. I mean, I'm, I'm convinced, convinced it's going to be like, Grandpa, what was it like when you walked into heaven? He's like, I had to pat the fire off my shirt. shirt. It's it's just just like, I crossed over because it was so close. close. But I'm, I'm telling, telling you, my, my, my grandparents, they made an indelible, indelible mark in my life in so many different ways. ways. I watched, I watched my, my grandma and grandpa. They, they just they, they partnered together in a lot of things. So they were constantly moving, gardening, growing their own food. I was very impressed. They canned their own dill pickles. And they were the most delicious pickles I've ever had in my life. My grandma made bread and butter pickles, homemade recipe. I always saw them working in the kitchen. And without without question, one of them was, 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 was working, washing dishes. The other one was drying. It was like a, a, a teamwork. It was a machine. It was just, it was working. And, and then they, even when they get frustrated at each other, my, my grandfather would affectionately call Oh, my, my, my grandmother, the old bird, and my, my, my grandmother would call my grandfather the old goat, and they had these little stuffed figurines that sat on the shelf that actually it was a goat and a bird. And, uh, but, they but they loved each other. other. Okay, okay. And, 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 I, and I'm watching this and observing this in so many different aspects. And then when my, my, my grandmother, before she passed away, she, she handed down homemade pierogi recipe and zucchini bread. And then when my grandmother passed, we actually inherited my great-grandmother's luggage that she brought over from Czechoslovakia when my family immigrated to the United States. And so, and so it's, it's, it's this beautiful, I mean, it, it sounds like mothballs, but, but it, it, was, it had so much family history and memories, and it was great to have something that was passed down physically, but what's more valuable in your life is what, is what you are, are passing on spiritually. spiritually. That's, that's the investment, that's, that's the heritage that really matters. And your personal testimony has a spiritual heritage. Meaning, your faith is not simply the byproduct of what you have experienced, but you and I, we are actually living out the foundations of faith that were laid before us. You could, you could trace, trace our origins of faith all the way back, back to Abraham in the, the Old Testament. Testament. You, you can see how the, the faithfulness of one man literally has, has, has impacted, impacted the rest of humanity when, when it comes to our faith. faith. And, and I, I like, like to say, say it like this, before you ever stepped foot into the doors of Keystone Church, church someone somewhere was praying for you. I, just, I, I don't believe in coincidence, coincidence or happenstance. Some, some of you may have been invited. Some, some of you just went out and asked people, well, what, what brought you to Keystone? Or what, 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 what brought you to the doors of the church? I don't know. I saw, I saw a sign. I saw something online. I was Google searching. searching. Okay. okay. All, All of those things, things are great, great, but I believe that that's in the grand scheme of God's design for your life. life. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean everybody walks in the door, makes the church their home. I'm just saying for some reason... God has brought you through the doors, even today, today to, to hear his word, not, not to hear from, from a man, but to hear from the scriptures, to hear from, from the voice of God, so that he could make a difference and impact in your life. You may have not known the person who was praying for you, you may never even meet them, but someone that has been praying and believing that God would do something in your life, either directly or indirectly, has helped shape your story thus far. And I just want to say, we just, we just read, read this passage in 2 Timothy. Timothy. Thank God for the grandmothers and the mothers and the grandfathers and the fathers and the aunts and the uncles and those who have been close to families that have literally prayed individuals into heaven and into a relationship with Jesus. And some of you, your faith is a direct result of somebody that has loved you, that cared about you, that constantly brought your name before the Lord and was praying for your life spiritually. In fact, can we, we do, do something here for just a moment? Just, just where you're at in your seat. seat. Would you, you just bow your head, close your eyes for just 15, 15 seconds. seconds? And here's, here's what, what I'd like you to do. I'd, I'd like, like you to think of just, just one person in your life that has shaped you in some form or fashion spiritually. And when, when you think, think of that person, person, which you probably thought of very quickly, quickly would you just where you're at in your seat thank God for the investment and the impact that they made in your life?
Jesus is not. I don't know about you, but when I reflect and I think back on the people that have sacrificed and poured into my life when they didn't have anything to gain other than just wanting to see me grow closer to Christ, I am so unbelievably thankful. And so knowing that your testimony is in part a result of your spiritual heritage, then here's a question that we need to answer that I want us to see very clearly this morning. is What can Jesus do for your home? What can what Jesus do for your home? And, and uh, very simply, the answer to that question is everything. everything. He can do everything. And, and, and Timothy's upbringing was an example of a spiritual heritage and a foundation that was cultivated and passed down within the home. I mean, what if we started to build our family and our value system and our legacy around Christ? How could Jesus start to shape and change things in our home? Many of us have, have said, said yes, we have surrendered to Christ and made him Lord of our life and have made him Lord of your home. Have you said, Lord, I'm going to give you access to every single part of, of, of my house and what takes place with my relationships with my kids and my family? Notice in the scripture, in 2 Timothy, with, with Timothy and Lois and Eunice, they didn't say in the passage of scripture that Lois and Eunice passed down Timothy a used Toyota camera and $25,000 and a modest home in Cranberry. And, and point zero 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 one on Bitcoin. They didn't say any of that, that in scripture. It, it, it was it was something far more valuable. It was a spiritual work. It's an eternal legacy that Paul is writing about. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's really going to matter and will ever remain. How can Jesus become more central in our home? Re Revelation three twenty. Austin referenced it. I didn't even know he was going to mention this. Is what it says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. So how do we, how do we build our home around Christ? How can Jesus make a difference in our home? Well, first, very, very practical if you're taking notes. Allow Jesus full access to every part of your home. If you, if you want more of Jesus in your family, family if you want more of Jesus in your house, if you want more of Jesus in your relationship with your kids, invite him into all that you do. And, and some of us, maybe we were, uh, you grew up in a Christian home, you had faith, values passed down to you, and I think that's, unbelievable. that's an incredible investment, incredible testimony and story, but what happens if you didn't? What happens if you didn't grow up in church, around church, share my story? That wasn't me. It was, it was as a teenager, teenager but not from the beginning of my walk with, with God when, God when I was younger. But what if you never had the opportunity to receive a spiritual inheritance from someone else, maybe as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, as a father, you feel a little bit deficient? I'm going to encourage you and challenge you, even if that is not in your story, God's calling you to pass on this faith that you hold dear you in your family. It can start with you. So maybe, so maybe you can see a model, model but now, now you get to be the one that pioneers this in your home. And let me just tell you something. If, if Jesus can do it for Timothy's family, he can do it for yours. You need to know that every account of Scripture where Jesus entered a home and then directly interacted with the family, that family's life was never the same. You can go through all the accounts of the New Testament. When he when went to the home of Mary and Martha, Martha the, the perspective of those two women completely changed in regards to the view of the relationship with Jesus. When, when Jesus, when, when, when friends came and lowered their, their, their friend through the roof of a home, home. And, and it, it wasn't, wasn't the, the, the faith, faith of the friend, friend it, was it was the faith of the group on behalf of the friend, friend that even got into, into that, that place. It said, that we're, we're going to get this man to Jesus, lowers to this man before him, and his, his life is forever changed. He's physically healed, but he's spiritually restored as well. Every time Jesus is allowed access and is allowed to, and he's permitted to step over the threshold of a house, spiritually, something is going to change. Change. It, 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 it won't, won't be a perfect, perfect home, by the way, way. But, but it will be a Christ-centered home. Please, uh, make, make no mistake. mistake. My, My family is not perfect. perfect. I'm going to say this. I am not a perfect 
husband, I'm not a perfect father, I'm not a perfect friend, and I'm not a perfect pastor. My goal in life is not to be perfect. My goal is to be consistent. So I am not trying to attain perfection because I'll never hit the mark. Um, I make mean, plenty of mistakes. My wife, she can agree. She, she will nod along with me. And uh, even this week, okay, our dog party, um, we, we have this um, amazingly energetic and annoying dog. And, and, and it's so challenging to love this animal. He's a Jacobi, so he just, he's just constant energy. And just, he gets in trouble. He'll eat things, tear into things at times. And this week, he was, just, he was sick most of the week. He couldn't keep anything down in his stomach. And so, so more and I constantly, constantly have to, to, to monitor you because there's one, one room that he goes to, to and we know he's in that room snoring around something bad is going to happen. So, so it happened to be there was a time during the week where Warren was home, I wasn't, and I salvaged some of it. I saw the dog get sick, so I got him onto the bottom flooring, and then thank God because I was going to clean that up. But he'd already done a few things on the carpet, and so I just, I kind of left it. And, and uh, not that kind of, I did leave it. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then Lauren comes home later and she goes, she goes, did the dog get sick in the front room? I said, yeah, he did. And she goes, goes you knew that there was a mess and, and, and you didn't clean, clean it up? up? And, and I, I said, well, I said, you know, no, no I didn't. didn't. She, she goes, why not? not? Here's, Here's where I made my mistake. mistake. And now, I just, I, the way I said it, it was like, well, you know, you know, we've, we've talked, talked about, about this before, but I don't like cleaning up the dog. dog. That's, that's your job. job. And she just looked at me and she goes, what, what do you mean it's my job? job. And, and I'm like, well, I mean, you're, you're really, really good at it. I just... <laughs> imperfect. imperfect. <laughs> what are you building in your home? I mean, I mean what, what kind of foundation are you laying? Like, what's... The reputation that you're aiming towards as you consume with building what's happening in your home and in your family, or is it a business, is it a bank account, is it external relationships, all of which are not inherently bad, but are you building something that's going to outlive you and outlast you? So we first have to allow full access to Jesus for every part of our home. The second thing is... Very practical. Create spiritual teaching moments out of ordinary circumstances. There's a scripture that backs this up in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 7. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. You know, sometimes when we think about, well, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, or I'm raising kids, or I'm trying to, to love my spouse the way Jesus would want me to, and I, I don't know the dynamic fully. Listen, even as a pastor, I mean, I've, I've shared this before. If you think my kids want me to come home and preach another sermon to them every day of the week, you're crazy. That's, That's not, not what happens. happens. But what we, we do talk about the scriptures, and we do talk about the Lord in the context of everyday life. life. So, so very, very practically, like, like as an example, uh, when, when we'll watch, watch a movie, movie sometimes, and I'll see something, something or observe something that has, has a worldview or an opinion or, or it's, trying to, it's trying to say something that, that, that I don't want to speak to and make sure my kids understand the framework of what's being discussed, I'll pause the movie at times. And I'll say, guys, I say, hey, listen. No one in the middle of this, but I'm hearing some of the things that they're saying. I'm hearing the disrespect that this, these kids have towards mom and dad, or, or that, 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 that dad has towards mom. And I'm just letting you know. We, we don't believe that's the way we're talk to one another, we interact with one another. Now my kids know what's happening. I'm not pausing. Like, dad, stop the pauses in the movie. Like, yes, no. We don't talk to each other that way. Just as one example, just practically, that's a daily rhythm of life. I'll, I'll change, change the commercials, commercials if, if something, something comes, comes on. It's just not appropriate for my kids to see it. I'll speak to the reason why. Why? why? Because, because I, I need to protect, protect their heart. I want to speak to, and help to just form and shape. I, you're not, not going to be perfect as everything, everything is as apparent, but you can be consistent. consistent. We've, We've given, given our kids permission. You can ask any question you want about anything. anything. So, so you hear anything at school, school, you hear anything, anything from friends, you, you want, want context for whatever, whatever you hear in culture or on social media, mom and dad will talk to you and give you an honest answer. We'll tell you anything you want to know. And while I'm telling you that we don't have a perfect home, what it's done is it's created opportunities 
for us to speak the truth of God's word as we walk along the road, as we're living everyday life. Sometimes, Sometimes in our minds, minds we think to ourselves, I mean, we're going to pass down, down spiritual, spiritual principles. I've got to sit there and dissect the Bible verse by verse, verse and do a full Bible study. study. There's, There's nothing wrong with that. If you, I'm, I'm not discouraging you from going, going through the scriptures, scriptures with your kids. kids. I'm, I'm just, just telling you, talk about the Word and talk, talk about the truth of God in, in everything that you do. It's, it's not, not just sit down for 10 minutes, close up the scriptures, close up the study, and then we're done talking about it. It's, it's an opportunity, opportunity for you to build rhythm in your life. In 2 Timothy, it said, it said a sincere faith that Paul observed in Timothy's life. Let's look at it again in verse 5. I'm reminded of your sincere faith that dwelt in his grandmother and his mother, and he perceived dwelt now in Timothy's life. Uh, that, that word in the Greek is the word anapokritos. It just means genuine. So it means Paul saw something in Timothy's life that he perceived as a genuine relationship with Christ. And I'll be honest with you, I think all of us, we have that kind of a radar built on the inside. We know if someone is being genuine. We, we know if someone's being truthful with how they're living their life or if it's, a, if it's, just a, it's a sham or we're seeing through it. It's like, this is something that it's meaningful. It's like what this heritage that was passed on in Timothy it was genuine. These are the types of principles you want to pass along in your home as well. One of my favorite things, again, to do, I love embarrassing my kids, uh, particularly my daughter, because um, what I'm doing is in our home, like there are times where I'll hug Lauren and, and I'll like, go in for a kiss and I'm always trying to give them attention before I do it because she can get so grossed out if I give you know, my wife a kiss or whatever. And I, just, I love that interaction, but I'm doing it for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I want my kids to see affection between me and my wife. I'm, I'm, I'm indirectly modeling for them what, what I hope and pray they desire one day in their spouse. And so our kids, they, they're, they're, they're watching us at all times. times. Guys, yes, yes, I love that we're all in church together, together and that we're, we're opening up the scriptures together, together, together and, and we're hearing the truth of God's word proclaimed. But, but listen, your time in church every week is so limited. limited. The time that you have in your home, your, your family, family is going to be infinitely more shaped and modeled and formed through that time that you have with one another. It's way more than just one hour or more every Sunday in church. You're the greatest example of Jesus that your kids and an immediate family will see. And I just want to say to the men in the room, you have the greatest opportunity to model to your kids what a godly man and a godly marriage looks like. Your kids are looking to you. Moms, your, your children, they are looking to you. They're seeing the way you love and care for one another. They're watching and listening to the way we talk to each other. And our kids, they're observing, they're listening, they're taking mental notes, both positive and negative. They see when dad and mom is affectionate to one another. They, they see when mom and dad respect each other and the, the tone and, 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 and how their voices are with each other. And, and when they see when mom and dad prioritize Jesus and prioritize church. And, and then on the flip side, they see the things in our home that they maybe everyone else doesn't see. Why does dad drink so much when he gets stressed out? Why do mom and dad raise their voice when, when, when they get frustrated? Well, why is it that they buy things to make themselves feel better? Or they tend to eat more when, 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 they're, when they're stressed and they've had a long week? Can I tell you that one of the most powerful principles that you can have in your home, and I'm going to just say this for my own life because I've seen the benefit, is to ask for forgiveness when you make a mistake. There have been many, many times I've messed up in the way I've talked with Lauren or what I've done, and I've done it in front of our kids. And man, I'm just going to tell you, yes, you can say sorry and move on. But there have been many times where I've had to go to my wife and repent and ask for her forgiveness. And then I will bring the kids with me in front of her and say, guys, listen, Mom and I already reconciled what just took place. I asked you to forgive me, I'm going to ask you guys for me to I should, I should never talk, talk to mom, mom that way, way again. Uh, that's, that's, I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. 
She is my best friend. I love her. And will you guys forgive me too? And if I could just tell you, these are the moments where you are passing on and laying foundation spiritually within your house. I don't always get it right, but I am aiming to be consistent. And some of you, you think you have bombed. You think it's too late. Maybe even you think, you think the mistakes, mistakes you made in your home behind, behind closed doors have forever wrecked every chance you have of building a Christ in home. I'm going to tell you, with Jesus at the center of your home, there is always hope. There is always a chance for Christ to build what you desire. With Jesus, it is never too late. Look at this passage in Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His, his mercies never cease. cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. There's always hope for you to build and create a spiritual heritage and make a spiritual deposit. Even if right now you're starting at zero, you can start today. The last point, and we're going to get ready to close. You want more of Jesus in your life, protect the spiritual deposit that's been made in your life. At the end of this particular passage in 1 Timothy, Paul encourages Timothy, beyond many things, that you're going to have to serve up your faith, and he talks about just what you're going to have to do in your life to keep this, this fire of serving Christ, uh, that flame hot and burning. But then in verse 13 and 14 it says, follow the pattern of the sound words that you've heard from me in the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Guard the good deposit. It means keep building this foundation. Keep a watchful eye on what's taking place in your home. What's taking place in your life spiritually. I heard a story from a man years ago. I didn't know him well. We lived in the South. But he was... Quite, Quite literally, literally. I, met I met him one time, time. he was a billionaire. And I never seen any type of financial advice from him. I kind of wish I would have. But I remember my interaction with him, it was mildly discouraging because really all he wanted to talk about was the subject of money. And I could tell that this was the central focus of this gentleman's life. Now, by the way, resource, finances, money, None of that is inherently evil. The scripture says the love of the money. So if it becomes the central focus of why it should exist, it can become something that's a stumbling block because it will fade away. It's going to go. It's going to pass on. Whatever accolades, whatever you acquire while you're here will not transfer to eternity. But this man, I remember he said, I check my bank account like three, four times every day to make sure that all the money, money that I've got is right, right where it needs to be. Man, this guy's serious about making, making sure his resources and his finances are, are lining up. up. <laughs> but the point is, he was so consumed with the balance because the balance is what was most important to him. So because that was the most important thing in his life, he's checking on it constantly. He's, he's taking, taking the temperature. temperature. He's, he's trying, trying to find, find out if there's been any withdrawals. He wants to see if that balance, balance is increasing. Paul's saying we should be doing the exact same thing in our, in our life spiritually. We should be guarding the good deposit. We should be, be making accurate, honest evaluations. Where is my life spiritually in relationship to Christ? Have you made any deposits into that? What's the spiritual balance in your home right now? And I will tell you that even if things are not what you want them to be, in your family, in your marriage, in your relationship with your kids, or where you're at personally, can I just say this? You're not the Holy Spirit. Meaning, you can't make the change in your home that you want to make in and of your own strength. Only Jesus can do that. He's, He's the, the only one that can step, step into your home and make a difference. I got a phone call this week that I was not expecting. I told my wife about it as soon as I got home. 
because, because it, it literally, literally blew, blew you away. away. There's, There's a lot that it takes nowadays, nowadays to shock me. me. But this, this one, one did. I got a call from a friend who I have known for over 30 years. years. We actually grew up together in student ministry when we were in high school. He's a good man. He gifted in worship, loved worship, loved the Lord, and he's he serving, serving Christ, Christ for many, many years. years. And then through a chain, chain of events, which, which oftentimes happens, make, make mistakes. mistakes. We step, step into a season, season of sin, sin that traps us. us. Maybe it creates an effect that we just make, make one mistake after the other. other. And now and all, all of a sudden, this relationship that we once had with the Lord has grown so distant. It's, it's grown so, so cold. We found ourselves completely separated, 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 separated from Jesus. Over the years, this was his story. He's, he's very honest about it. And, and so, so for the better part of close to the 20 years, years he's been out of a relationship with the Lord. Uh, literally, literally to the, the point, point where he would, he would tell, tell me over the phone, phone I'm probably, probably never going to go going back to church. I don't believe what I used to. to. And, and as, as a friend, friend you feel like, like you can only do so much. much. Just like, I love, love this guy. guy. I'm praying for him. I'm doing what I can do. But I don't, I don't know, know what else to do. do. I, I, can't I can't fix this. this. And, and so, so periodically, periodically we would keep in touch, touch maybe a couple times, times a year. Where he, he calls, calls me, me and I'm, I'm, I'm on, on the road, road driving. And, and I can tell he's asking me how I'm doing, what's going on, and I'm giving him an update. But I can hear his voice like, he wants to tell me something. And he's like, tell me. And he's like, I can hear. He didn't even know how to say it. He said, I just need to know I've come back from Christ. Like, hello, who am I talk to? to? <laughs> and I mean, I'm ready to swirl off the road because I don't know what to say. I'm literally speaking. Speak. I said, hey, tell me what, what's, what's going, going on. on? He, he said, said, well, he said, I, just, I actually started. started I, we, 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 we put our, our son, son to school. And, and, he said, it's in the church. church. He said, for whatever reason, I started walking to the church on Sundays. Just now. I just sat there. I was listening to the truth of God's word because I don't know something just was happening on the inside of me. And he said, and it's like my heart started to melt. He said, whatever the, the, the bitterness, the anger, the frustration, all these things I've held against God, he said, I've been, he said, Foster, I've been everybody in our circle in the past that I thought I'd never talk to again. And I've been calling them all to tell them that I've given my life back to Christ. And, and I'm like, like man, I'm, I'm so, so excited, excited for you. I can, I can hear him tearing up on the other, other end. end. And, and, and in, in my mind, mind I'm almost like, like, God, how is this even possible? possible? Because, because some, some of you, you've been where maybe I was at, at as I'm listening to this, this when, when you, you see, see someone that is so far from God, God you, you might even start to lose hope that God's ever going to even do what you pray and believe that he do. But can I just tell you that that story of my friend Surrendering his life back to Christ, that is only because of what Jesus is going to do when he has access to our life. And I was so encouraged to hear him. He's talking about how he's growing, he's going to get involved. I'm like, please, please come and visit someday, please. I'm just encouraging some of you. You can need some of this peace that I'm describing that Jesus is going to bring to you. You, you, you need, need something, something to be built, built that isn't, isn't present in your life. You're craving it. You're desperate for it. I'm just reminding you, only Jesus can satisfy what you're wrong for. It's Christ, Christ, Christ alone. Your, your family, your home, your legacy, your testimony is worth it. It's worth building your family on Jesus. You will never regret it living fully for Christ. Austin said a couple times, and I love his honesty, he said, man, it might seem boring. I'm just going to let you know, bro, your life is blessed. And anybody that serves Jesus in that capacity, that's what I want for my kids, that's what you want for your kids, that's what you want for your home. Man, I, don't want, I don't want to see them go through hell and back to come, come to Christ, Christ and I, I want, want their, their life simply to be blessed 
because they know that they know that we've helped to pass something on to them. And even in every age in this room, you have a part to play. Some of you think that you've, you've missed your chance because you're getting older, maybe you're moving into the next phase of your life, maybe you're getting ready to retire. I don't really know. Fill in the blank. It wasn't just the life that Timothy's mother lived. It was grandma as well. So generationally, every single step along the way, you had a chance to make a spiritual deposit, to make a difference in the testimony of your children, of your grandchildren. It's not too late to build what Jesus is designed that you would have in your home. So let's let him build a testimony that will be an example of God's goodness and grace to everyone around us. In Jesus' name. Would you bow your head and close your eyes on you this morning? If you're here this morning and you're to say, Pastor, I, I need this. I need more of Jesus in my home, in my life. In fact, I, I want to make him Lord of my home. Maybe you've made him Lord of your life and you've never surrendered. And say, God, I'm going to invite you into every aspect of you. But this morning, I'm saying, yes, we need you to step up. Jesus, I need you to step across the threshold and change what's going on in my house. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand so I can pray with you? God, thank you. God, 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 thank you, thank you. Lord, come to you now. And I thank you for every single hand that was raised, even those that maybe didn't raise their hand, but they desire and crave this in their home. Lord, I pray that you would reshape, reform, and, and transform what's happening in our lives and behind our four walls. Jesus, we need you. We're crying out to you. You're our hope. You're what we desire. And I pray that you would help to shape us. And Lord, forgive us if we missed the mark, if we've gotten off track, or we've done something that's hurt you or grieved you in some way. We want to build our lives on you and you alone. Trust you. We love you. We thank you for what you're going to start to build, a healthy foundation in our homes. Let that be our testimony. In Jesus' name.